today. All right, hello everybody. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining our Eloqua user group meeting. We do this every month. Uh, we almost always do it the third Thursday of the month at the same time. I know we're all over the world here. We have global attendance, but for me it's 10 a.m. Central in Tennessee. So we try to keep it consistent for you guys. Um, and so the next one will be the third Thursday of October. I think it's October 20th. Same time, same place. Uh, Really quickly, if you don't know me, I'm KP or Karen Pendle. I'm your host. I work for Sojourn Solutions. We're one of Oracle's many partners. We also partner with Adobe and Salesforce and do other stuff besides Eloqua, but Eloqua is um, near and dear to my heart. It's where I started my career in the marketing space uh, 17 years ago. So lots of Eloqua background as a user, a marketer, and then switch over to consulting. Um, 13 years ago. So 13 years, most of my career has been on the consulting side, which has been cool to see a view of what lots of different companies do with Eloqua or try to do. Um, success, failures, the whole shebang, been a part of a lot of it. Um, a lot of learning from both too, not just the failures. So anyway, um, I've been hosting this Eloqua user group for the last few years. And today we're going to get into some pretty cool topics with um, what another Sojourner is going to present. But I'm based out of Tennessee from upstate New York, hence no accent. Um, I went away last month. So thank you, Kristen from Sojourn for hosting and our August Eloqua user group meeting. This is actually, um, I was at a beach in Florida for a couple of days and uh, that was actually at sunrise, but it was cloudy. So it doesn't really look like it, but we had a drone. So my fiance has her arm behind her because she has the drone remote. So it's, we're trying still trying to figure out how to do that without it being a little bit awkward, but um, it was a pretty nice little getaway. And our agenda for today. So like I usually do, I'm going to start with some relevant reminders, keep you guys in the know. Um, some of it you may already know. Some of it are just kind of reiterating things. And then I'm going to give you guys a quick tip on how you can in mass update or in bulk update Eloqua contact data. It's just a little tip that I want to share that Gosh, I think like Alex, Kristen, and I learned about it years ago, and we find that our customers don't know about it. It's like a little hidden jewel in Eloqua that you don't know to look for. So we'll show it to you. Um, not everybody necessarily has access in their Eloqua. Anyways, I'll get to that. Then we're going to switch it over. Alex Robinson from our team. He's been in this Eloqua user group meeting before. So if you like, I think I've heard from Alex before in one of these meetings. He has presented before. He's back to share with us some best practices on deleting contacts and how to go about that in Eloqua and how to keep them from getting back into Eloqua. Like say your CRM every day or every couple hours updates Eloqua. Well, you don't wanna go through all the effort and time to delete contacts from Eloqua only to have another system push them back in. So that can, uh, it, it, it is frustrating. So he's gonna share with you guys some info on that, some tips. We'll open it up like we usually do to questions. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to enter them in the, the Q&A or the chat. The Q&A is a little bit easier for us. So that's our, our, our wish, if you can put it there. Um, we'll also open up your mic if you want to talk at the end and share a tip or present or ask a question. So just be thinking in the back of your mind if there's anything you want to ask or share, that would be wonderful. And I'll send you guys just to hit on real quick. I'll send you this recording later today. It's, we always pop them on our website the same day. So I'll follow up with an email and make sure you have the link to it. So if you have to hop out early, no worries. So um, I always try to start these with just something relevant in the world, what's going on. There's a lot of things, but internationally, so around the globe, September is recognized as World's Alzheimer's Month. So um, I, you know, I, gosh, I didn't know much about Alzheimer's and dementia and the difference between the two until I had a friend whose dad um, actually had Alzheimer's and passed away uh, last year. And that really drove me to want to learn about it to help support one of my college buddies, Megan, and as her dad and her family was going through that. It's a difficult thing to go through for the person who has dementia and Alzheimer's is one type of dementia, um, but also the family members, of course. So. If you didn't know, there's hundreds of types of dementia. The one that a lot of us hear about is Alzheimer's. It's because 90% of people who have dementia get Alzheimer's disease. And it's really uh, the neurons in your brain get impacted. It impacts memory and other things. Um, and also physically can impair people as it progresses. 
um, and impacts the body, not just the, the brain. So this little infographic on the right is just a project and projection of what the Alzheimer's Disease International nonprofit is seeing. So just a couple of years ago in 2019, 55 million people have had dementia. They're seeing it grow rapidly. Hence me like sharing this with you guys to help inform you and encourage you to educate yourselves even beyond what I'm sharing of course today is just minimal just to get you started. Um, and hopefully encourage you to learn more about it. The whole thing with this month and why it's like Alzheimer's month is the, the mission really behind it is to help people change their perception um, about dementia, Alzheimer's and confusion and thinking, you know, different things about it, just like suicide. Like people have these thoughts about it, like, oh, we shouldn't talk about it or, oh, that only happens to old people. No, it's not that that's not the case. Actually, Alzheimer's you can be 50 years old, 40 years old and get a form of dementia, including Alzheimer's. So they're really trying to raise awareness for it. Um, hence me trying to help. And that picture is from last fall, almost a year ago when I went to support my friend, Megan. Um, and there's her mom. Her dad's not there because he passed. We were walking in memory of her dad, but that's just one way. So I just encourage you guys to educate yourselves. Um, there's a link I'll have shared in the follow-up email. There's also just ALZ.org. That's another, um, it's actually, I think, a US-based nonprofit that does global awareness. So I chose the Alzheimer's International.org. I think they have a little bit more scale internationally than ALZ, but nonetheless, they're both great. Um, you can donate to help with the cause. There's a lot of research being done to try to figure out treatments for people with dementia, Alzheimer's, um, attend events like this and just support people literally just like making those shirts for Megan's family, the, how much it meant to her, her siblings there and her mom, especially who lost her husband to Alzheimer's. Um, I can't tell you how much my heart, like it ached for them to have gone through what they went through, but also the good feelings of what helped them by just doing this, participating in it with them. I mean, she pulled me aside, Megan's mom, and just said, thank you so much for coordinating us we've just been so distracted by mourning and grief that we wouldn't have put this together. We wouldn't all be here today. So um, we giggled a lot. We teared up of it and it helped them, I think, in the, their process at that point in grieving. So, all right, switching gears here completely. <laughs> Eloquista. So the 22C release, this is just more of a reiterating. Um, all of us should have it by now. So today, if you didn't know, it's September 15th. As you can see in the dates here, you should have um, the most recent pods that had it were pod three, four, six, and eight just last week um, had the, the new features, the bugs fixed, and some other things done, um, some changes in features with the Eloqua third release of 2022. So um, if you notice anything different, you're not crazy. This, that's probably my main point in sharing that reminder for today. So if you want to learn more about what was included in that release, well, we had a presentation in August from Tamina on the Oracle product team share specific information about that topic. Feel free to watch that, but you can also just read the Help Center, not Help Center, the Re Eloqua Release Center to see all the details. And they're starting to publish some information about the last release for Eloqua, which I believe comes out in November, the 22D release. So of course, again, there'll be some new features, additions to existing features, bug fixes, things like that. So every year, four times a year, Oracle does this for Eloqua. It's pretty pretty regimented. Sometimes it gets bumped around a little bit, but it's every quarter. They always stick to that. Hopefully they do next year. Watch that'll change next year. <laughs> um, Oracle Marketing Summit, which is a part of Oracle Cloud World, huge ass event that's gonna happen in Las Vegas in October. There will be a separate section for marketing so um, it's a separate section of the hotel, specifically marketing summit, including Eloqua courses and other Oracle marketing product courses. So if you're like, hmm, we've been thinking about getting Eloqua Maximizer to help personalize and test our website. If you go to this event, then you might want to go to a Maximizer session and you know learn more about it there. I don't know. But if you're not going, um, I think they are making an attempt to open up some of the sessions remotely. I did hear prior that it was only in person, 
But just as of like early this week, somebody from Oracle said they're making an attempt and hopefully will happen where some of the event will be, be available online. I don't know what that means yet. So as we learn more, we'll share that with you. Um, the next thing here, Eloquent Tip Tuesday, just a reminder there to take a peek at that. You will, if you follow this top liners post, you'll get an email notification in your inbox that gives you the literally like a, the whole post. It'll share it in the email. So you don't have to proactively go to the website. I get that email every Tuesday and take a look at it. And I tell you, I've been using Eloqua 17 years and there are tips coming out on the Eloqua tip Tuesday that Oracle's putting out, the product team and Oracle's putting out and I'm learning stuff. Some of it I'm like, oh, I've, I know that tip. I've been there, done that. But most of them I'll tell you guys, I'm learning stuff just like hopefully you guys are too. So take a peek. Um, this is what the page looks like on top liners. And if you log in, then you have the ability to follow it and get notified via email whenever a new tip comes out. So um, this is just the look and feel of it. But anyway, highly recommend it. We're all learning, hopefully, and open to it. Um, the next thing is just the insiders, the eloquent insiders group on top liners. It's just a good thing to follow. Like it says here, there's a whole bunch of different topics related to Eloqua that you can get notified about and just keep yourself in the know beyond attending this Eloqua user group meeting. Because obviously stuff happens in between the weeks that we don't meet. Eloqua free training, uh, the help center, I'm just gonna reiterate that. They continue to keep it pretty darn current um, and videos in there as well. So tap into that, it's free. Anybody in the world can access it. So, I mean, I've shared that with people who are using Marketo or Pardot and wanna know something about Eloqua and want a video to it. I'm like, here you go, here's a link to it. And it actually is in the Eloqua Help Center. Um, Oracle University, for a lot of classes, you have to have a paid subscription, but for the Eloqua Explorer one hour course, that's more like an Eloqua 101 high level, well, just one hour course, um, you can watch on demand or you can give it to somebody to watch on demand. Like if you have a VP that says, okay, we bought Eloqua, remind me, it was a couple months ago. Like, what does it do? That might be something good you could share with them if, of course, they're asking for something like that. Like, send me a video that recaps what it does. There are shorter versions. There's like two, three minute versions of um, what Eloqua does, but this is a more comprehensive one, obviously, being one hour. And if you're new to Eloqua, it's great to start. If you miss any of the Silicon user group meetings, if you're not, they're always on our website um, and our resource center, there's the link. So um, I, I do point that out in my follow-up email to you guys after these Silicon user group meetings every month. And then just if you wanna stay in the know, other stuff outside of Eloqua, just MarTech, marketing operations, what are the latest trends in marketing? What's the latest shiny new tool? And um, stuff like that, click Z is who I follow. I get a daily email, I think it's daily. I think you can choose obviously your preference if you wanna get a daily or weekly, but they're good. I don't think they're too biased. They do B2B, they do B2C. Um, it's hard to find that. Usually a lot of uh, different publishers out there are really just B2C focused or B2B, but these guys do a good job. And they do talk about other Oracle stuff, not just Eloqua and, and such. All right, so with that, now it's my turn to do a quick tip for you guys on how to bulk update Eloqua contact data. Um, so let me dive right into Eloqua. And I'm gonna pull up our Eloqua sandbox. So I'm logged in and FYI, if you ever didn't know this, the Eloqua um, sandboxes, they'll say test environment and I'm right here on the top right. Also, um, you'll see there's no insights, right? There's no reporting. If you look at Eloqua production, um, a live test, uh, sorry, a live environment, you scroll, you scroll, and there's dashboards and insight, that little graph. And then if we go back here, there's no little graph, there's no reporting. That's intentional. Um, you're not supposed to use an Eloqua test environment to actually send live campaigns. So for different reasons, reporting is not inside of an Eloqua test environment. That's another tip I guess I'm sharing, but anyway. So let me dive in now and show you the tip I'm supposed to be showing you. Caveat to this is not all users can access what I'm about to access in the settings area. It's typically only admins, Eloqua customer administrators. So you have to have those rights in Eloqua to do this. So I click on the settings button and I see a couple different things. Um, database setup, what I'm gonna do is go to 
database fields, so contact fields specifically. I can see other kinds of fields, contact fields, account fields, campaign fields. What I'm going to do is show you guys, I'm going to just hand pick any field, I'll do country. And this just shows me, again, admin level stuff, like what kind of field is it, text, pick list, there are the values in that pick list. The trick here, a lot of people don't realize is the view, the field population details button. When you click this little sucker, it's magical. Um, it pulls up all the values that are currently stored in that contact field called country. So if I'm like, son of a gun, somebody used PL, it really should be spelled out as Poland. Somehow this got into our Eloqua. Um, I can come in here and do save, and it's gonna make sure I wanna do this. This is just a little, are you sure KP? You're about to update how many four records? I mean, if it was 4 million, you'd wanna be really sure, but um, and hit okay, and it's done. So if I give this a refresh, well, it did it automatically, I didn't have to do it. Now you don't see the PL, the Poland's now four people. Um, if I wanted to change United States to USA, save it's going to again make sure i want to do it hit okay and this is just a simple tip it's a one-off thing couple of other caveats you would ideally use an automated program canvas to do this with the contact washing machine app ongoing but just for a quick scenario where you just want to get in there and make the change you can do it this way um another caveat is like if i'm noticing that there's issues here, right? Like US, we had United States, now I have USA, I just put that in. If I wanna track back, where did these four records, these four contacts, how did they get US? Everybody should be coming in with USA, for example, whatever our clean value is, oftentimes it matches to your, like your source system, such as a CRM, or if you have a student database, whatever its pick list is, we usually try to match Eloqua to that typically. But if you wanna you know, troubleshoot and figure out how did these four contacts get us i would recommend doing that going to the four contacts you can just create a segment and a filter to find them just do country equals us and then they'll pull up the contacts and then hopefully you can backtrack from there look into each contact and see like did they submit a specific form and that's how i came through do we have maybe an integration with zoom info and zoom info pushed in the data for those four records and used us so doesn't mean you're going to be able to fix the source like with Zoom Info, you wouldn't be able to change that. Zoom Info is going to send you what they're going to send you. However, if we have an Eloqua form that another user didn't use the correct pick list and their pick list is using US instead of USA, we can fix that. So um, my whole thing is just take this tip with a grain of salt. It's a neat little tip. Um, you can come in here and change data, but you want to be careful about it. Like, you know, somebody could go crazy in here and be like, I'm going to change annual revenue to 11 new billion. And now everybody's going to look like a hot lead. Um, don't do that, you know, obviously, but um, it does come in handy for some of those other situations where you're just quickly trying to update a few records at a time, typically. It only lets you do 50,000 at a time. I think you may have seen that um, when I did. So if I want to change pink, to hot pink, you can see right here, it's kind of light color, colored, but you now this won't apply because there's only three contacts that I'm gonna change their color from pink to hot pink in the color field. Um, but if you are doing this, I've done this before for customers where I'm literally doing this manually and I'm updating hundreds of thousands of contacts by doing this, it will only do 50,000 at a time. So if it actually was um, instead of three here, 300,000, I have to keep doing this multiple times to get all of them cleaned up to hot pink. So little bits to it, but that's my tip. If you have any questions about it, feel free to again to enter them in the Q and A. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and introduce you guys. Actually, I'm gonna share just for a second longer um, because I have a slide for it, for Alex. So welcome back, Alex, uh, appreciate you coming back to do your presentation as it states there related to contacts and keeping Eloqua as clean as we can. So thank you for taking the time to prepare and do this presentation. Oh, and Alex is raising his hand. Oh, he's not a panelist. Somehow you got removed as a panelist, that'll help. He can't talk guys. So let me promote him to a panelist so he can actually 
talk and share his screen. Bear with us for one. There we are. Thank you, Karen. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I had an internet hiccup, so I uh, dropped. Oh, that'll do it. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello, everybody. We're going to learn a little bit about Eloqua House Cleaning today. So let's get started. So we're going to learn how to delete contacts from Eloqua and then block them from re-entering uh, from your CRM. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Salesforce. We're going to use an example. So uh, why would you want to do this? Most common reason is for uh, cost. Uh, Eloqua costs money by the number of contacts you have. So if you have a lot of dead contacts, inactive, bounce, there's no reason to keep them in there. So why not get rid of them? Secondary to this is database health and to rid your marketing database of dead and useless records that offer no benefit to your marketing operation. And again, for the um, benefit of database health and again, cost. So how do you do this? First thing you want to do is identify your contacts for removal. So we're just going to use a, a simple example. You could go a lot further and a lot more complicated if you'd like. Uh, but basically what we're going to do here is we're going to look for everybody that's marked as a hard bounce because they are unmarketable and uh, get rid of anybody who has no activity in the last 12 months. So to do that, I usually look at email opens, clicks, page visits, website visits, and form submits. It's not a good idea to remove unsubscribes because you may want to send transactional material uh, as well. They may resubscribe at some point through your opt-in process. So to do that, all you need to do is create a segment to capture those contacts. Uh, I'm sure most everybody knows how to build a segment. So this was pretty straightforward. Uh, you're going to have your marked as hard bounce back as one of your primaries. Then uh, all your <coughs> activity-based uh, criteria are going to be uh, nested. And there's a little button that's not showing here at the bottom that you can click. You, you just click and highlight these and click on the group button and it'll add a group and you can see these little parentheses that get added. So it's going to be a uh, hard bounce back or um, no activity. So either or. So backing up the data. Uh, you always want to do this. Always, always, always back up, make copies. So this is pretty straightforward. In this segment, all you need to do is click on the View Contacts button. It's usually in the upper right corner of the screen uh, when you're looking at a segment. And then once you have your contact view open, you want to select all contact fields from the contact view. Uh, usually you have to wait a few seconds for these to load. If you go and click on it right away, you'll only get one view. That's because Alec was loading in the background. So usually I wait three to five seconds before actually selecting this. That way uh, it'll load properly. Now, once you have all your contact fields viewed, uh, you can go into the bottom left corner of the view contact screen. And there's an export button. You just click on that, it'll send you an email and then you can download the file from your email. Now, as soon as you get that file, don't leave it on your desktop. Don't leave it laying around. You immediately wanna back this up to a secure company location. So it's not susceptible to any hacking or PC or hard drive failures. So that way it's saved forever. So uh, what do you have to do next? The next thing you want to do is uh, essentially you need to create fields in Salesforce to indicate that they have been deleted from Aliqua. So uh, if you don't do this, uh, whenever you run an import or somebody does a full import, everything that you deleted that exists in Salesforce will be pulled back in again and it will negate the work that you've already done in deleting those contacts. So in order to prevent that from happening, you need to create a new field called Eloqua Exclude. You can call it whatever you like, but uh, Eloqua Exclude is good on both the contact and lead objects of Salesforce. So this can be created as a check box Boolean and note that Salesforce Boolean fields use a value of one or zero for checked and unchecked, not yes or no. So once created, you need to populate these fields to those records that are going to be deleted. So how do you do that? Blocking deleted leads from Salesforce. So in order to populate Salesforce with the appropriate checks, the value of one in the uh, Eloqua exclude fields on both the lead and the contact, you'll need to create two new custom actions in the Eloqua Salesforce integration app. So you need a little bit of knowledge on um, using the app and, and how to build actions, uh, but I'll show you, it's pretty straightforward. So you need two, one for to mark the contact with the Eloqua exclude on, and one to mark the lead with Eloqua Exclude on, because they're, of course, the single ta contact table in Eloqua can translate to both leads and contacts in Salesforce. So you need to make sure you do both. So I'm going to show you the configuration of these uh, on the following two slides. So this is the temp mark contact with Eloqua Exclude on. Uh, action type will be update. 
connection is your production sales force. And then it's going to be eloquent contact to Salesforce contact. All you need to map here is the contact ID. Of course, this one will always be there in default. And then you need to map a value of one to the eloquent exclude. Uh, in order to set a static value, you just click on the little hamburger here and select static. And then you can just type a one in this field. And that's it. The lead one looks very similar. Uh, the only difference is you have the trigger assignment rule, which you do not want on. And it will be, again, type update Salesforce production, uh, contact to Salesforce lead. Lead ID will automatically populate when you do this. And then again, all you need to do is click on uh, add your eloquent exclude field, click on static in the hamburger, and add a value of one and save. And that's how to create your two calls. So once you've done that, you have to add filters into your imports to actually key off of this field and prevent that data from coming back in. So um, you'll have a lead import and a contact import. Essentially, what you want to do is um, add the criteria, eloquo exclude equal false to your import. So this is an example of what uh, kind of a standard lead import will look like. So generally, we're just grabbing people with an email address uh, that are not converted, converted equal false, and eloquo exclude is equal false. Uh, similarly, the contact will be uh, very uh, similar, and it will not have the converted because it is a contact already. Um, but I've bolded the actual clause you need to add. So if you have an advanced statement here and it's quite compli complicated, you just make sure you put this at the end and not in any kind of uh, bracketed statement and it should work. You can also click on the um, little triangle button. I didn't put a demo here or a screenshot, but there's a little triangle. You can actually click on it and see the count uh, within the app. Uh, isn't it on the previous screen? No, it isn't. So yeah, that's on the import. These are export actions. So uh, yeah, so you can check the count if you just click on that little triangle where the statement is. It's usually to the left of it. So you've created your calls and you've updated your imports to prevent this data from coming back in. So how do you actually get this all set up? So uh, now you have your list for deletion ready in archive, the required Salesforce field set up, the required Salesforce integration actions, and the field supply to the import, you can process your records. So to do this, you will need to create a program that pushes a value of one to the eloquent exclude fields and leads and contacts. Pretty straightforward. So to feed your program, you add the segment that you created at the beginning of this process. Then you add checks to see if a lead ID or contact ID exists in Eloqua. So this is a check for lead ID. And this would be a check for contact ID. You don't have to use a filter. You could just use the uh, simple uh, contact check contact field status uh, filter. And just to make sure that um, it is not, if it's not blank, then what you're going to do is you're going to fire your update contact call here. And then it checks for a lead, or sorry, this one's lead. So yeah, it's going to uh, check for lead ID. If a lead ID exists, it's going to update it in Salesforce. And then this one checks for a contact ID. If it exists, it's going to fire the update contact. Uh, action that you created. This program is very straightforward. All it does is simply add a one to all the fields, um, to all the contacts and leads that are going to be deleted. That way it, it prevents them from ever coming back into Salesforce. And of course, you just run it when you're ready. So congratulations, you made it to the final step and you can delete your records. So to do this, simply go to the segment in Eloqua, View your contacts, again, like we did in the uh, first steps, and select the email only view or a view with the email address in minimal fields, because you don't really need all the data. You just need the email address. Click the export button and then download the file onto your desktop. And once you receive the email, uh, uh, sorry, click the export button and download the file once you receive the email with the link. Uh, and then just clean the file out. So if there is any extra fields, just get rid of them. All you need is an email address column uh, of all the records you want to delete. And then you can perform a contact upload back into Eloqua selecting the delete contacts option. So this is the same area that you would use for uploading contacts. You just make sure to select the import purpose delete contacts. And that will delete your contacts and prevent all records from coming back in from your CRM. Questions? We do have a question. Um, do you mind showing each element? And I'm not sure if that means like the full process that you just did, but um maybe just some of these inside of Eloqua, sure. just a quick little yeah let me yeah. uh let me see if i can show you where each place is Bear with me all right i got logged out of Eloqua when i disconnected as well so just bear with me for 30 seconds yep 
I did have Aqua open. I'm going to just launch a poll really quick um, just to see if you guys can answer it. I'll give it 30 seconds or so. How often do you delete Eloqua contacts? So people are starting to answer that right now. Give it All right. 15 more seconds. So bear with us just a second, Alex, while we finish up this poll and just get an idea of how often people are doing this. Quarterly is awesome. Um, monthly seems like it's rare, but it's obviously a really good practice to be doing it more than quarterly. So monthly is fabulous. But um, let's see here. Okay, let me end the poll. Looks like, yeah, we've done it for more than 30 seconds. Let me publish the results. Looks like most of you are doing it quarterly and monthly. So fantastic, guys. That's great. And if you are one of the ones who's never done it, only does it once a year or twice a year, there's always room for improvement in anything in life, but I mean, geez, <laughs> I would say like start with once a year and then just go from there to try to do it more often, put a reminder on your calendar or something, whatever you need to do to remember to do this. What Alex is showing is more elaborate than that, right? He's also showing you guys the full circle of, well, but let's make sure these Eloqua contacts we took time to delete from Eloqua don't get back into Eloqua. So the cool thing about what he's showing you guys is it'll take care of it going forward. You really shouldn't have to touch it um unless like you get a different crm or something but thank you for taking the poll alex i'm gonna shut up again huh no worries um once you have this process set up you probably wouldn't need to do it monthly you'd probably settle on quarterly is what i usually see clients do once you have this set up because you don't you know you're not constantly deleting people coming in back into the crm so uh let's run through a bit of the elements so segments are accessible from the little card contact card uh you just create a segment like this uh, we'll just call it test delete. And then again, so filter criteria, uh, we want to find marked as hard bounce back as of now. And then for your nested statement, you just say not opened any emails. I won't add them all, but I'll, let's say I add um, to not clicked any emails. And you have to set your date. So uh, within the last 12 months, like this. And then you highlight like this, you hold down control and click it so they're both blue, uh, blue and you uh, click on the group button at the bottom and then save. Now, this is our production environment, so I'm a bit hesitant to uh, do view contacts here, but uh, maybe I could do something like. Uh, if I just do a single, do you know if you're in the production environment, Karen? Yep. Oh, let's do. I should be able to find you. This do contains. Testing area. Yeah, hopefully that should only give us. Yeah, there's only a couple in there. So there you are. So that's um, how you would do it. Um, there's how you select your view. And then there's the export button at the bottom. So those are the elements you'd need to do that. So that is the segment area. Uh, let's take a look at the app. And we have a question from Anne-Marie. We'll get to it after Alex is done, but Anne-Marie just wanted to shout out, let you know we're gonna answer your questions. So uh, to get the app, of course you go to, you need access to the app. Um, this should only be an, an administrator access. So if you're just a, a field marketer, you may not have access. You may want to get someone who from marketing ops to do this. Uh, but essentially, yeah, you go into the app and your actions are here. So this is going to be the outbound action. So you would add an action. Um, it's going to be update and then contact. And we'll just say contact. And then it automatically puts the contact ID in there. And then all you need to do is put in your field, which won't be in ours. But to demonstrate, you just click on this static text and add your one and save. And you would uh, repeat this process except uh, for lead, except you would change the object to lead. So that's how you create the actions. The imports are here. So this is where you're going to put your filter. So uh, import Salesforce leads. If you just click on here and edit, uh, you can see that we have a couple of different parameters here. So you would just simply put in here your statement and uh, let me just find it from the presentation. I won't save this either. 
Where is it? You're with me. There we go. So you would just add it like this. And you would do this to both your lead import and your contact import. And then save it. I'm not going to save it, of course, because this is our production environment. But that's how you do it in the imports. So that's segments. That's the actions. That's the imports. And then program builder is pretty straightforward. Or sorry, not program builder. Program canvas. Uh, you just create a contact program. Uh, you would add your segment in. And then to add in the uh, field comparison, it's right here. Compare contact fields. So you would just do something like this. So. SFDC lead ID, uh, not is blank. Then you add your Salesforce integration action, which would be the new update lead call you created. Uh, I didn't create one, so I'm not going to add it, but essentially you just click on here and you add your action that you created. And then you repeat the process for contact and the, the contact action as well. And you just want to follow the program flow that I displayed in the presentation, which will be made available uh, along with the recording after this call. I think that's all the elements of this process. I don't believe I missed anything. Uh, so let's take a look at the next question. So it's if there are CDO records associated with the contacts that are in our deletion list, do their CDO records also need to be deleted in order to fully remove them as a contact in Eloqua? Like get rid of the contact, get rid of any link custom object records to that contact. Or do they automatically get removed when the list is um, deleted from Eloqua? Yeah, so your answer is CDO linked records do not automatically get deleted uh, when a contact is released. That is correct. They get unlinked. Um, so you have to manually delete the CDO records or user programs to do this. That's correct. Um, I believe there is, a, is there a CDO deleter? Um, there is there... in the CDO version of program. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and there's also a third party app so you can add to advance and, and do more uh, complicated logic. And you can also archive them as well. Uh, within that. So to answer your question, in short, yeah, you, you have to uh, delete the CDO records as well if you want them removed or they would just stay unlinked. Um, another angle on that is if you have another app, let's say Zoom Info or Sixth Sense or something like that, that pushes people in, um, or if that record gets modified, I believe, uh, that will relink and recreate a contact depending on how the, the integration is set up with that CDO. But if more data comes in, uh, yeah, it could potentially relink and recreate that contact. Any more so questions? Soup to nuts, guys. Like, if, you know, you most of us are using custom object records in Eloqua. I would do everything Alex is showing and then also have a program canvas, a custom. Let me show you what I mean. So let me pop open Eloqua. Where am I? Drag and drop. OK. so. Um, I'm back in our test environment and I would go to program canvas. This is very important. Make sure you don't default, like, oh, create a contact program. That's what everybody usually does. You go to create a custom object program. This would be a program specifically to delete the custom object records for those deleted contacts. So I'm going to just randomly pick a custom object. Um, you don't see it. Oh, yeah, you do. Sorry, it's there. But you can always expand this and see more stuff. But there is an out of the box delete custom object record action that you can use here. So you'd want to make sure you have the right um, listener to pull people in and then just connect it to that step and have this program running just like Alex's process would run around the clock, have this run around the clock as well. So it's the full deletion of any KP record, whether it's a contact or a custom object record. And I could be a, a custom object record and, you know, 100,000 times in your Eloqua, well, it's probably overkill, but dozens of times, depending on how you're storing custom object records, like tickets, for instance. And Marie, like if I've bought a bunch of tickets and I'm in your Eloqua and a custom object for ticket purchasers, um, if I've purchased 20 tickets and I have a record for each, you'd obviously, if you're going to delete my care and contact, you'd want all 10 or 20 of those, whatever I just said, ticket records um, removed from Eloqua as well, more than likely. <laughs> Yeah, you could also use the segment you created and build a program for your CDO or CDOs. Uh, so you just run the segment uh, in the contact program and then feed it into this program, the linked uh, CDO record, and then it will come into this program and delete as well. So you could build a more advanced uh, one solution where there's a branch off the segment for each CDO you run, 
you let those run, wait a few hours for all the deletions to occur, then you do uh, the pushover uh, to Salesforce to update the record there. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Anne Marie, good question. Alina, good question as well earlier. Um, we have a, less than 20 minutes left. We are almost done. Let me share the right stuff here. So at this point, I want to open it up with another GIF and see if there are more questions. I think somebody just typed one in. Um, control of availability feature, delete, delete link customized record upon contact deletion. I'm not sure what the question is there. Maybe Henrik, if you can type more, I'm not sure what your question is with that. It, unless you're saying it's a controlled availability feature. If it's anything is ever controlled availability, that means we can't all use that feature. So you have to submit a support ticket or service request with Oracle support to get it enabled in your Eloqua. Um, another question came through, how do we send the duplicate custom data object records into programs though? Um, that is... If you... So what you could... Way. So what you could do is uh, if you build a segment, so what you could do is um, the segment should, if you feed it into a contact program, it should feed all the linked records into the CDO program, not just a single record. Yeah. And then listeners are one, I'd have to save this. Um, oops. Let me put my glasses on. Get into that age, 41, where I need to... Use my glasses when I do prep, I guess. That's new. All right, so now I can actually do something with this listener and create one. So that's one source, right? I just created whenever a CDO record is created, that'll pull people in here. I don't want that. Um, so I can always just remove it. And I think, Alex, you're on point. Like, I think because it doesn't have any other option to add people, you'd have to have another program canvas feed to this program canvas to get the correct custom object records in here um, into like a placeholder step and then move them to the delete custom object records. Yeah. And, and you could add that into your program that does a Salesforce update. So you could have a branch for um, uh, add to the CDO program, add to the second CDO program, add to the third CDO program. And each of those programs would perform a deletion for that specific DDA, CDO because you can only have one CDO per CDO program. So you could link all that up into the same program, run your segment through all one program. It deletes all the CDO records first, then updates Salesforce, uh, and it does all the work in that within that one program. And then, of course, the CDO branch programs that you're sending it to. So perfect. That helps with that one. So just coming back to Henrik's question. Thank you, Henrik, for clarifying. I didn't know about this. So again, learn something new every day with Aliqua, pretty much. But there actually is a the controlled availability feature he mentioned. I'm going to put it in the chat. There actually is a feature, again, controlled availability. It's not in everybody's Eloqua instance right this second, but you can get it enabled. It will do what we're talking about. If you delete a contact via Alex's process in a program or manually, it will, if this feature is enabled in your Eloqua, it will also delete the linked contact or custom object records. That's fantastic. That's newer, I think. I don't know how long it's been out, but it's still controlled availability. So, um, Thank you, Henrik. That's pretty cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah, it saves you a bunch of extra work. That's great. Awesome. All right, there's some more. And then, yeah, somebody asked Henrik, do we need to request it each time we delete contacts? That is a good question. Um, no, no, I think if it's a feature, they, they just turn it on. Okay. Yeah, they'll just turn it on for you. And then it'll be permanently on. And, and I then, believe it. Sorry, I believe it's a, it's part of the step in the program. So when you, you click and add it, you um, can do that. Nice. You can just keep using it ongoing. Um, and then Hassan asked a question, can we update duplicate custom data object records using a CSV? Yes, if there is a key for the CDO. So if there's a primary key, yeah, they can then you can align the key. So you're, if you're uploading a CSV list to the CDO, you need to be able to match. So usually like you'll have a unique key to do that. So sometimes it's email address, it'll be maybe a Salesforce ID or even an Eloqua generated ID or um, you'll need to have a key. If the key is duplicated, no, I believe it only deletes one, the first record it finds. So you may have to do multiple uploads to do that. Yeah. 
Here's the key feel. Whatever your custom object has chosen, this one doesn't have one, but you would almost oh, you would always have one. Unique custom, uh, unique code field. Sometimes it's email address. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's like ticket purchase ID, what have you. So the way that you mess update with a CSV file is you go to you drop down here the first drop down upload custom object records and walk through the wizard and perform the updates. To delete, um, I think you have to actually view the records and like you can delete them in mass. Yeah, you can do it. Here. Yeah. Delete all. Or if you want to do it one by one, you can just delete this one custom object record. So I just deleted that one. Now there's only going to be two left. If I want to delete the rest, delete all. And now I've just cleaned out this custom object. It has no records. All right, let me go back to the Q&A. Hassan came back with, but not if the key is duplicate. If the key is duplicate, how would we do that, Alex? Or can we? Because then we're only matching to one of them. Yeah, I think Alec only picks the first match. You probably have to upload multiple times to get all the duplicates. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully there aren't like five duplicates of the same. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have to keep doing You'll it. You'll have to do it five times. <laughs> the upload here. Okay. Um, let me make sure I'll give it a minute. If there's any other questions, guys, feel free to, free to pop them in the Q&A or the chat. Another shit's Creek gift. Um, well, we're not going to stay here if we don't have to. So if you guys, let me, oh, here comes another question. Oh, it's just a thank you. You're very welcome. Um, we will get together again in a month. So October 20th is our next LA user group meeting. Same time, same place. Um, I'll email you guys an invite just to make sure you, you know, know about it. I usually try to do that the week prior. And if you want to present, so I don't have anybody lined up for next month. Um, any topics or anything. So feel free to email me um, any ideas you have, any topics you want covered. If you want to present, even better. I um, would love that. And we'll just go from there. We'll figure it out one way or another, but always looking for you guys as the users to give us your input on what you want to have us present. So we're not just kind of pulling stuff out of there, but we can. We have before. We'll pull stuff down. So um thank you very much for joining let me just double check one more time make sure there's no questions that i missed anywhere i think we are good in the q a and the chat yep we are good all right thank you everybody very much for joining have a great rest of your thursday and we can have a lovely weekend thanks again alex for presenting appreciate it you're welcome bye-bye bye everybody